Hello, today I will retell to you the horror series Lock and Key. Brew some tea and let's begin. A man returns home after a trip to the store when he suddenly receives a call about the death of Randall Locke. Without losing his composure, an unknown person got to work. He retrieved all the documents and paintings, then took out a fiery key from the safe and inserted it into himself. The house burst into flames along with him. The Locke family leaves their hometown. The youngest son, Bodhi, asked a lot of questions about the past, which deeply affected his mother, Nina. The group decided to stop at a cafe for a snack, where they encountered Rufus, a mentally challenged child, about whom we'll learn more later. It turns out that the incident involving Randall's death was known throughout the region, so they were treated for free in many places. Nana arrived at the house, which they would call their home, and it was named Kingdom of Keys. They were greeted by Randall's brother, Duncan. The interior was vast, and the building dated back to World War II. Kinsey was preparing for admission to an art university, while the older son, Tyler, smoked excessively and was troubled. Now, let's journey back to the past, where the tragic incident occurred. Randall and his wife loved each other, and Randall was a teacher. Suddenly, their home was invaded by his student, Sam, armed with a weapon. He shot Randall's wife in the leg, and Randall attacked him, resulting in Sam accidentally killing Mr. Locke. In the present, Body approached a well and dropped a photo into it. Suddenly, hearing a terrifying female voice, the boy ran away. Duncan kept the secrets of this place from Nana, and it was strange that the house had not been repaired for about 20 years. Tyler told his relatives about his younger brother's fear. The entire family headed to the well, but unfortunately, no one believed Body's words, and they returned home. Morning arrived, and the teenagers went to school, while their uncle went to work. Body and his mother remained in the Kingdom of Keys. Randall's daughter was constantly bullied at school, but one of the students turned out to be normal and decided to get to know Kinsey. Scott was a bit peculiar, he invited her to a film club where his friends gathered. Tyler couldn't shake off his memories, so he agreed to go to a party to distract himself. His mother went to the laundromat, and the younger son was left alone. His curiosity wouldn't let him rest, so Body went back to the well. He heard the female voice again, and a horrifying creature began questioning the child about some keys that could even change one's appearance. The boy found one of the keys, which could teleport him anywhere if he wished. Of course, the first place he teleported to was the cafe. His sister didn't believe him and kicked him out of the room. While his mother and sister were talking, the boy managed to find a key inside the sink. Bodhi started coming to the voice more often. It turned out to be a demon named Dodge. She explained that with the help of the second key, one could see the spirits of the deceased. Tyler developed feelings for a classmate named Jackie, and he also met Idan, the mean girl from their school, who immediately tried to play with him. He struggled to do it because Sam constantly haunted his mind. Kinsey arrived at Scott's gang, and the group appeared peculiar to her. They gathered to watch a horror flick, and Kinsey began to feel uneasy as Scott's words about the movie brought back memories of that fateful day. Her younger brother picked her up by the roadside in his car. Buddy had a strong desire to encounter his father's spirit. Thanks to a key, he unlocked an entrance to another realm. His mother inadvertently entered the portal and became trapped there. She couldn't find her way out. Buddy sought help from Dodge, who demanded the teleportation key in exchange for his mother's rescue and then vanished right before his eyes. His brother and sister eventually arrived, and they finally believed the young boy's story. Tyler successfully retrieved his mother from the alternate dimension. Nina had forgotten absolutely everything, and it turned out that the older a person became, the faster they forgot about these enigmatic keys. The demon was on the loose, and Dodge was imprisoned alongside Sam. Nana had no recollection of the events of the previous day, and her sister had doubts about what was happening. She wondered if it might be a dream, but Bodhi convincingly proved to her that it was all too real. Tyler, however, was skeptical about entrusting the keys to Bodhi because the young boy had lied to them about losing the teleportation key. In reality, it was in Dodge's possession. Armed with a toy sword, Bodhi set out on a hunt for the demon and stumbled upon another key hidden inside the vacuum cleaner. His classmates proved to be quite obtuse, constantly obstructing Tyler's attempts to get acquainted with Jackie. Ellie paid a visit to Nina, and they engaged in a conversation. 
Ellie had been a friend of Randall from the past and had been in love with Lucas. She had also been a close friend of Randall. Her departure was rather abrupt. Meanwhile, Body attempted to utilize the key he had discovered, but it didn't seem to fit anywhere. The young boy decided to take a stroll in the vicinity, where he encountered Rufus and struck up a friendship with him. As it turned out, Rufus worked there, and it was a store filled with traps. The cunning lad appropriated one of the traps to capture Dodge. The creature's behavior was quite erratic, she ate voraciously, failed to pay for her purchases, and even managed to steal an expensive necklace from a jewelry store. Dodge, however, was not averse to spending the evening with a handsome young man, but he had the misfortune of being literally strangled by her without any shame. Scott approached Kinsey, and they measured something together. The young man invited her to participate in the filming of a short film. Tyler's teacher turned out to be a former instructor of Randall's. He was privy to everything about Randall and even his friends, a fact Nina's husband had never disclosed. Finally, Tyler managed to establish contact with Jackie, but Idan was her friend and divulged everything about that night, preventing him from getting acquainted with her. Their mother simply wanted her children to be happy and kept a watchful eye on them. Bodhi stumbled upon a key that allowed access to a person's consciousness, but he nearly fell into a trap. It was quite sturdy. Placing bait on it, he contemplated entering his own mind but lacked the audacity. Dodge paid him a visit, revealing that the trap had been a decoy. The villain was no longer having fun, she grabbed Bodhi and made it clear that she wasn't particularly kind. During the filming, Kinsey met Gabe and the mean girl Idan. How I despise her! Idan was expelled from there, but Kinsey agreed to take her place in the movie. Locke's daughter was distraught. She remembered her father during the shoot and couldn't play her part. Nana questioned Duncan about Randall's friends, but her brother didn't reveal what he wanted, as if everyone was keeping a secret from Nana. Her father had always been kind to his daughter, but he never talked about his past. The young man dared to pierce a magical key into his body, and now he was in his own consciousness, filled with toys. Seeing that body was freezing, his sister and brother approached him. The children were at an amusement center, and it seemed to them that they were high. In his mind, he had a memory of his father, Randall, who was literally right there but couldn't see them. After snapping out of his thoughts, his brother took the keys from the boy, claiming to be the most mature, although he was actually the most foolish of them all. The relatives decided to divide the keys among themselves to prevent them from getting lost. Dodge lived like a queen, taking whatever she pleased and leaving. She arrived at the home of that unknown man who set himself on fire, taking the demon key from the boy and tossing it onto the railroad tracks. Scott gave two tickets, but the girl didn't take them for some reason. Tyler played hockey, and Nana, along with her son and daughter, came to his game. Kinsey found it difficult to adapt to the girls. The game ended, and Tyler's team lost. Approaching Jackie, he offered her a ride. Suddenly, a local bully started bothering his sister, and unable to endure it, he punched the guy in the face. The teacher understood him, behaving like that in such a state was perfectly normal. Tyler reminisced about Sam, and a disabled classmate supported him. Kinsey ignored Scott and didn't go with him to the concert. Her sister asked Tyler for the keys to penetrate her consciousness. Her brother accompanied her, and inside the girl's consciousness, there was a strange shopping center. Kinsey was delighted to hear her father telling her stories, and Tyler was always in her memories as a kind brother. Suddenly, the girl's fear attacked Tyler, and daringly, she struck her fear, and they returned to the real world. Nina, along with Ellie, visited an Italian restaurant. The woman had quit drinking six years ago, and, as a result, forgot everything. When the woman told her about Body's imaginary friend in the well, Ellie was shocked. The boy found another key, which turned him into a ghost. Bodhi savored the moment and flew as if it were his last time. He also met his great-grandfather at the cemetery. As it turned out, Randall had also used these keys with his brother. Ellie came to the well and wanted to bring Lucas back to life. At that moment, Tyler saw Bodhi lying unconscious, but the boy returned, intending to find his father. The mother supported her daughter as best as she could. She still accepted Scott's invitation to go to the concert. Tyler and his younger brother wondered why their father never spoke about the keys. The woman found Randall's yearbook, which had strange symbols printed on it, just like the killer's hand tattoo. The journal also mentioned something about the keyhouse. 
the eldest sister dared to enter her own mind and kill her fear alive. Now Kinsey had become bolder and started taking better care of herself, but she also became more aggressive. Her brother was horrified when he heard that she had destroyed her emotion. It deeply troubled him because their father always kept the secret of the keys hidden from them. After apologizing to Scott, the self-assured Kinsey invited him to her home to have some fun. Nina was eager to learn more about her husband and meet her close friend, Aaron. However, she suffered a stroke and claimed that she hadn't been able to speak for 20 years. The women entered the old playroom, and Nina was curious about the Omega symbol on Sam's hand, but the woman allegedly knew nothing about it. Dodge visited the psychiatric hospital and, with Aaron's help, tried to gather information, but the woman was in shock. The only way was to enter her mind using the keys that Body possessed. The boy met Rufus and started inquiring about Lucas because when Ellie summoned him from the well, he heard her. The mentally disabled man also revealed that during World War II, the British had a base in the key house and they hanged deserters in that well. Body found a book about their town that mentioned the realm of keys. Suddenly, Dodge emerged from a picture of the well, intending to steal all the keys. Unable to bear it, he threw her away somehow. Tyler ended up on Jackie's team, and the teacher enrolled him as a volunteer to help him find himself. Out of fear that Dodge might come, Body began blocking all the doors of the house. Tyler wanted to impress Jackie, so he threw books about England and history into his mind since the girl was interested in these subjects. Randall loved taking care of Nina, giving her gifts, and making her happy. Scott visited Kinsey, and although she was trying to get closer to him, he foolishly didn't notice it, thinking they were too close. Kinsey showed him the key that unlocked her mind. Going inside, the guy thought he was in paradise because everything was unrealistic. Only her father was in her memories, which made her feel sick. However, Scott pulled himself together and supported her. While Tyler and Kinsey were talking, a horrifying monster entered their house. All the doors began closing by themselves, and the stove near which Nina stood suddenly ignited Dodge. Taking Bodhi hostage, she went somewhere, and a flame formed between them. Tyler wanted to save his little brother, but he couldn't. It turned out that Dodge couldn't retrieve the keys herself. They only worked when someone willingly gave them to her. The devil teleported to Sam in prison, and after releasing him from the cell, the mighty Dodge gave him another chance to uncover all the secrets. The eldest brother heard a whisper, followed by other relatives. The key was inside the piano. Body, an expert in these magical keys, immediately recognized that they would fit the box. Kinsey inserted the key and realized that nothing was happening, but it became clear that the key was meant for controlling people like puppets. Now, Body wasn't alone. His relatives also heard these keys. It turns out he wasn't the only guardian of the keys. Scott finished filming, and the scene with Kinsey didn't turn out to be the best. Aiden constantly behaved like an idiot. She wanted to get back at her. Using the key that controls people like dolls, they began to torment the mean girl forcing her to spill food on herself. Scott asked her to stop playing with the key, but she was rude to him and decided to stay with Gabe. While Nina was talking about Tyler with the English teacher, she received a call from the camp, informing her that her son had taken a hammer to school. Body kept his reasons for taking it to school a secret. When Nina came home, she felt scared. Someone was inside the room. It turned out to be Ellie, and she had come to take Rufus's toy. Out of the corner of her eye, Nina noticed a scar on Ellie's body that resembled the Omega symbol. Kinsey, after breaking up with Scott, went out with Gabe. When she returned home, her brother was angry with her after seeing a video in which I Dan was acting foolishly. Uncle didn't remember anything about the keys. Morally, he couldn't help the child. Body was right. Older people forget about the keys faster. Nana visited the English teacher again, convinced that Randall and Ellie had lied to them because her husband had the same scar. He didn't explain where it came from. Mr. Joe calmed her down, saying it was all nonsense. Tyler was hurt that he wasn't taken seriously at home as the elder brother. Jackie took the first step and they kissed. Scott decided to visit Kinsey and seeing a picture of his father's friends, remembered them. These three died in the well, as reported in the news last year. Mrs. Locke decided to visit Ellie's home to uncover the secret. Rufus greeted her, and Ellie wasn't home. It turned out that Ellie hadn't brought any toys for him, and it was all a trick to gain access to the key house. Kinsey told her brother about Randall's deceased friends. 
Suddenly, hearing the whisper of the keys, they decided to go to him. The whisper was coming from the street, and the key was somehow inside a vase in their yard. The magical thing had a flower shape, and it needed to be inserted into a tree. Suddenly, memory jars of Duncan emerged from the ground, and in one of them, they saw how their father killed his friend Lucas. After this incident, it was reported in the news that they had drowned. Nina went to Mr. Joe's place, he had sent her a message about finding a box of Randall's photos and asked her to come urgently. There seemed to be no one in the room, but somehow Mr. Joe was already dead. When she called the police, the woman started searching the rooms. On the first floor, she found Ellie, who apparently killed Mr. Joe so that Nina couldn't learn the whole truth about the past, as only the teacher could have told her. The mother was at the police station, and the detective took on Mr. Joe's case. However, the officer didn't believe Nina's words, he thought it was most likely suicide. The police department also took the box that was on the teacher's desk, which contained photos, and it seemed like Joe wanted to show them to Nina, but she didn't make it on time. Tyler couldn't forget Duncan's memory, how could such a kind father harm his friend in that way? Kinsey carried that particular memory in a jar with her, and when she took it out, she went to Duncan. Uncle was delighted that his memory was stored in a jar, but he felt unwell for a moment and forgot everything about the jar. Tyler couldn't spend time with Jackie, he returned home, and his sister showed him another memory of Duncan's, where their father and his friends went into the mysterious cave. Tyler refused to go anywhere with her and handed over the remaining keys, as he wasn't bothered by all this anymore. Ellie was mourning Mr. Joe, and Nana asked her to step into the yard to talk. Mrs. Locke interrogated her, and Ellie seemed to lie at every step. According to her words, the woman supposedly stayed home yesterday, but Nina saw the whole truth and said that the scars were made by all of Locke's friends in honor of Lucas and the others. The movie club team gathered to discuss where they would shoot the rest of the parts, and Kinsey suggested going to the cave and, in the process, uncovering its secrets. In an abandoned room, Bodhi found a key that looked like a head, but when he inserted it into the cabinet, nothing happened, most likely it wasn't magical. The police treated Joe's situation as a suicide, they interrogated all his friends and checked fingerprints, but there were absolutely no clues. The detective handed her the boxes with pictures since they were no longer needed for the investigation. Duncan's uncle had a migraine, and Body wanted to go outside with him, fearing that Dodge would come and he would be alone. Coming to their grandfather's grave, the devil appeared there, unable to take the keys herself. The creature decided to blackmail him by threatening to harm all of Body's loved ones. She also gave the fire key to Sam, who, in turn, set the entire prison on fire and sticking the key into a police officer, destroyed him. Nina was examining the evidence, but Duncan still couldn't remember anything, not even answering a simple question about the scar. The movie club team visited the cave, and they were on the spot, but the daughter wanted to go deeper to find clues about her father. Kinsey started to hear whispers and found the Omega door, which was locked. Inside the cave, the tide began, and the water from the ocean rushed in at lightning speed. The guys had to swim away from there. Only Gabe and Kinsey were left outside, and Gabe was shocked when he saw the Omega door, as if it were an illusion. Locke's daughter finally came to her senses, and they had to dive into the water to get out. With effort, Kinsey got out, and Scott was angry with her. The team could have died there, and all their equipment was left behind. The movie club team left, and Gabe took her home and supported the girl. It turned out that he liked Kinsey. Tyler was at the party, an unsure young man who hadn't responded to his future girlfriend all day. Suddenly, Dodge appeared and flirted with Tyler to take the keys from him, but she was interrupted by Jackie, who was already there as well. He felt awkward and decided to head home. Dodge met Tyler on the road and offered him a drink. Long ago, Sam was studying to become a surgeon, they were dissecting a pig's body. He wanted to get noticed and started playing with the pig. Suddenly, his teacher saw him. Immediately, the school's principal, Rendell, called him into his office. He didn't scold him but wanted to help him because he knew Sam's parents weren't taking good care of their child. At that moment, with the help of a painting, the devil Dodge summoned the boy to obtain all the keys. That's how Sam died. Now the psychopath, breaking a window, sneaked into their house. Taking a gun, he searched for the Locke family. The maniac took the phone from the table, fearing that someone might call emergency services. When he reached the second floor, 
Nina heard him and went after him. The kid saw a broken window and realized that something was wrong. When the mother saw Sam, she was shocked. Bodhi decided to use the ghost key to observe his mother. Sam came for the mind key. Mrs. Locke really didn't know anything about them, so the maniac had to lure the keys from the young ones. They knew the whole truth. Meanwhile, Tyler was having fun with Dodge, not caring about what was happening at home. The psychopath tied the captives to the table and forced them to eat and tell them what was new in their lives. Sam is mentally ill, in the past, his father humiliated him because he wanted his son to be a boxer, not a surgeon. Tyler was also friends with him when he lived in Seattle. Nina, seeing a tattoo similar to Rendell's scar, began coaxing information from him. The troubled guy, unable to hold back, told her that Dodge sent her for the keys. Bodhi immediately understood everything. After making love, Tyler decided to leave. When he wanted to take his jacket, the eldest son saw teleportation keys. It all became clear to him, the girl he was drinking with was the same demon from the well. The guy managed to escape and get home. When he went downstairs, his eyes saw Sam. The aggressive guy hit the psychopath hard in the face. With the help of the fire key, the maniac managed to push him away. Sam tied up Tyler, and Kinsey confessed that she had buried the mind key, and he needed it. The sister and younger brother went with Sam. Tyler began to hate Rendell because he lied to him. The young man thought they were friends because the head always supported him. His opinion changed after he opened his journal, where there were records about him, how he didn't aspire to anything and was just a bad person. Tyler, breaking the chair, managed to get out and also freed his mother. Kinsey couldn't find the mind key, she simply tricked the killer. Before his arrival, she put the keys inside the toy. Finding a knife, she wanted to send Sam to heaven but failed. Suddenly, a strange monster emerged from the ground, Kinsey's fear, which she had buried. The creature attacked Sam. Tyler took the key from inside the toy because he heard her, and suddenly, they heard the sound of a gunshot. Nina thought they had shot Kinsey and Body, but the killer killed the monster. Returning home, the maniac searched for Nina and Tyler, as they had managed to escape. Suddenly, Miss Locke approached him from behind and thrust a knife at him, but he managed to dodge it. Tyler quietly crept up to him and used the mind key. Sam was dismayed by what he was doing. Dodge had forced him to do it and take the keys. In reality, he didn't want to kill Rendell. It turned out that Mr. Locke hadn't lied to Sam. He simply wanted to support him and encourage Tyler to be friends with him. Dodge managed to locate the key house and, once inside, eliminated her opponents. Sam didn't want to give the keys to the demon. Taking a knife, she took them from him and left. The police arrived and using the ghost key, Sam became a spirit. The police closed the door he had come out of and now he couldn't return to his body. Kinsey and Body returned home, where they were found by the police. Because of this incident, their mother started drinking again, thinking it would make things easier. Ellie, along with Rufus, prepared suit for the Locke family, who had gone through a tragedy. Lucas, who had died 20 years ago under strange circumstances, had somehow ended up at Ellie's house. She had summoned him using the Anywhere key because she loved him deeply. On the day Dodge broke into the Locke's house, Lucas inexplicably wasn't at home. Many people brought food to the family as a sign of sympathy. The mother was acting very strangely, seemingly enjoying herself. Tyler immediately figured it out because he could smell minty gum on her breath, which meant she was trying to hide her drinking. They needed to solve this mystery, perhaps Dodge wanted to access the Omega door. Kinsey decided to find one of her dad's friends who might still be alive, only they would know where the remaining keys were. The detective visited Nina because she was currently going through a tough time. Jackie and Gabe accidentally ended up at Tyler and Nina's place. Their mother met them and was happy that her children had friends. Ellie, along with Rufus, paid them a visit. Kinsey approached the curly-haired woman and asked about Dodge, but she had no idea what the girl was talking about. Bodie and Rufus decided to visit Ellie's house to retrieve Bodie's favorite toy. Ellie felt uncomfortable because he could see Lucas, but she had to let them go. After all, a young child couldn't know about such things, she thought. While the Locke kids were spending time with Gabe, someone knocked on Kinsey's door. It turned out to be Scott, who brought her ice cream and wanted to apologize for that day. He saw Gabe and immediately realized that Kinsey was cheating on him. The kids played soldiers together, and Rufus wanted to confess to Body about his enemy. 
At that moment, Lucas suddenly walked in, and Body couldn't understand where he had come from. Supposedly, he was Rufus's cousin. Ellie also arrived and was shocked. Her beloved boy had told her he wouldn't be home all day. Nina had placed her broken cup in the cupboard the day before, and when she opened it, it was in perfect condition. Kinsey, upon seeing this, realized that her mother had been randomly using the keys. After alcohol, Mrs. Locke started remembering the incident with the mirror, and it became clear that alcohol helped the elderly remember the keys. After long conversations about their mother, Tyler and Kinsey decided to head to the Omega door. Dodge visited Aaron, now armed with the mind key, enabling her to discover where Rendell had hidden the Omega door key. Together, Tyler and his sister arrived at the colossal blue door, adorned with the names of key holders, including Rendell and his friends. Only with Aaron's help could they obtain information about the whereabouts of the Omega key, as she had met Mr. Locke in her youth. Dodge inserted the mind key into Aaron's head, delving into her memories. After numerous attempts, the demon managed to retrieve a book containing information about Rendell's hiding place for the Omega door key. Aaron had never experienced a stroke. She was merely trapped inside her own mind. Kinsey sneaked into the psychiatric hospital, and as soon as she reached Aaron, Dodge managed to escape using teleportation. Kinsey attempted to talk to Aaron but failed. Just as the girl was about to leave, the mentally unstable woman revealed the truth to her. Lucas was Dodge. Nina began to experience alcohol-induced hallucinations and, at one point, mistook Tyler for Rendell. She placed her husband's ashes in a cupboard, hoping Rendell would come back to life. For the first time, Kinsey offered her support to her mother, and they had a private moment. Tyler discovered the Omega key inside his father's ashes, revealing that Mr. Locke and Aaron had hidden it in the man's mind, where it had lain dormant. 